In this video, Piers Morgan challenges Vivek Ramaswamy on gun control. Watch how Vivek completely leaves Piers Morgan with little to no words. Most of these subjects and schools him on the real meaning of the Second Amendment. Watch this. Do you think guns kill people? I think people kill people using guns and using other instruments to do it. I'm, yeah. I'm curious. Look, as, as a, a British citizen who has a home in America, I can go and get a semi-automatic rifle very easily tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm not even an American citizen. I just have to apply for a hunting license, give my American address, and I'll, and I'll get yeah. access to any firearms I want. I can, I can kick myself up like Rambo, right? Legally, legally. What I can't do in America is buy a Kinder Surprise chocolate egg. They're banned on safety grounds. So Piers Morgan's trying to equate this law of not being able to eat the certain egg because of safety reasons to be the same ridiculousness as us being able to own guns so he's trying to say that that ridiculousness is ridiculous of us being able to own firearms for, for the right to self-defense for a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed coming from a country where the first thing they try to do is come take our firearms so they can put us under their boot well can, i think that makes no sense you're a very bright man i'm a medical can you and food explain choice to me, absolutist can you explain to me why it's deemed more dangerous that i should have a chocolate egg with a little toy inside it that might choke people compared to an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle that could slaughter a lot of people in a very short period of time. So I am a pro-freedom person, and so I'm not going to sit here and defend some other foolish restriction that the United States has mm. on a million things that I'm generally against. But I can speak to the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is not about a technocratic judgment about maximizing or minimizing the number of people who are killed. The Second Amendment is about something else altogether. Mm. It's analogous to the discussion we just had about free speech. It's a different value judgment. Are there risks to allowing free speech? Yes, there are. But we bear those risks because that's who we are, mm. that we trade that risk off to say that's how we preserve freedom when it comes to the First Amendment. The Second Amendment makes a similar value judgment. The purpose of the Second Amendment actually wasn't to allow people to have the freedom to hunt. Vex is one of the few people that will say what the true reason for the Second Amendment is. Not just sport shooting, not just hunting. That's not what it's about. Mm. It was about repelling and keeping a foreign, in that case, started British yep. monarchy yep. at bay. It's like mutually assured destruction in the Cold War. Both sides have nuclear weapons. Well, that's how you assure a stable peace. It's a mutually assured destruction relationship between the citizens and their government, between the governed and their government. Right. That's what this is about. Mm. And so why is the United States of America still, for all of our imperfections, 250 years into this ballgame, still the place that when you open the borders, as sadly one administration has, people don't go running out, but they come running in? Why is it the country that still gives hope to the free world? If it's so bad, like the media says, what he's saying is, why are people still trying to flood to come in? Why, Piers Morgan, do you have a house in the United States if it's so bad where if you walk down the street, like the media says, you're going to get shot? One of the reasons why is the Bill of Rights. And the Second Amendment is the one amendment that gives teeth to all of the other amendments in that Bill of Rights. So that's a value judgment we make. The Second Amendment was not written with the question well, my, of but, what minimizes the number of deaths. No, Those it, are other policies. It, it was, you could arm yourself as part of a well-regulated militia, and then over time, actually, until the 80s uh, in America, it was considered by the Supreme Court to mean just that. And then as the NRA got more political and became less apolitical, and some h hardcore Republicans got onto the uh, board of the NRA, they then put pressure on the Supreme Court. Which Piers, how are you supposed to arm yourself as part of a well-regulated militia if you can't own firearms as an individual? What, are you just going to go ask that tyrannical government here? Arm me. They eventually were successful in doing, in reframing the interpretation of the Second Amendment to mean an individual right to bear arms. And what has I happened... I think the history is a lot more com complicated. But what has happened, and it may be a complete coincidence, but what has happened since that reframing of that interpretation is that the number of mass shootings in America has begun to skyrocket. You ever heard of a truck gun, Piers? You ever talk to any old timer from the 50s, 60s, 70s that'll tell you hunting season, they'd bring their gun, they'd keep their gun in the truck when going to school, they'd have all these things, but they didn't. you didn't see all these crazy lunatics and these shootings back in those days when almost everybody had a gun back in those times. So so you're just trying, you're just trying to come up with this BS that, no, the Second Amendment didn't really mean that, that all of a sudden this big, scary NRA is rechanging the meanings of these things. 
the individuals had the guns back in those times. They didn't go and ask King George for to arm them from, from King George's armory. So I think that in the data that you cited, a lot of confounding variables, one of which is the rise of mental health crises in mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. You can look at data points over certain periods where before you really saw a rise in violence, you could see per capita gun ownership being about flat over the same period that you did see violence and killings rise. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest explanations is the shuttering of psychiatric hospitals in this country. I mean, you ought to draw the lines of correlation. There are many ways to draw lines through a scatter plot. Over the same period that you saw the shuttering of psychiatric institutions, you saw almost a direct inverse correlation in the other direction in the rise of violent crime in this country. So that was pretty much the synopsis of this video. It's not the full video. You can find the full video on the internet, the full podcast. Vivek Ramaswamy is well-spoken. He puts the facts where they need to be. But ladies and gentlemen, if you agree with Vivek Ramaswamy, like, comment, subscribe if you'd rather live in dangerous freedom than peaceful slavery.